Welcome, Mark, to my podcast. I'm so excited to have you as a guest. How are you today? I am doing great, and I am honored and humbled at the uh, to be able to be on your podcast and share with your community. So thank you. Well, you're welcome. I'm very uh, honored that you took the time. Because when I read about your amazing story, I thought I really need to have him on. So I wrote it down so I don't get it wrong. You said that you were overcoming limiting beliefs, stinking thinking, and self-doubt. And then you stepped into starting a coaching business. You lost 65 pounds and you were running a 5K, so five kilometer, or was it a five? Is that a five miles or five kilometers? It's uh, actually equals to be 3.2 miles. Oh, okay, so five kilometers, 3.2 miles um, yeah. in record time for a new runner. So that's amazing. And um, because you thought you couldn't even run around the block and everything. So let's unpack this all a little bit. <laughs> Who okay, was Mark yeah. before all this amazing transformation? Mark was a great, outstanding, amazing person, but didn't know it. <laughs> and so, you know, I, when I think about my story, I think it started when I was a child, I was raised by a single parent mother mm -hmm. and as hard as she worked to provide for me and my two older brothers, there were times that she just couldn't make ends meet. Mm -hmm. And as a result, there were times where we literally didn't have water in our home. Oh my God. And so I remember I can vividly see a time where I was carrying five gallon buckets of water down the street from my uncle's home. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine a young tender teenager mm -hmm. with these five gallon buckets. I mean, the plastic bar digging into the crevices of my hand, straining mm -hmm. under the weight of the water mm -hmm. and trying to, just so that we can have running water. What this put in me was a mindset that I didn't want great. I didn't want to be fame. I didn't want fortune. All I wanted to do is not struggle. I didn't want to go from paycheck to paycheck. So mm -hmm. it built in me an impression of limiting myself, mm -hmm. pushing out all of the greatness that other people saw, but I didn't want. I didn't mm -hmm. embrace it because I just wanted to be better than the yeah. day before. And mm -hmm. so I, who was I? I was a man full of boundaries, limiting beliefs, and as a result, had a lot of stinking thinking. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, a, it's, an amaz like, it's an amazing transformation. But so was there, was there a moment where you knew, okay, now I have to get out of this stinking thinking. I have to get out of limiting myself. Did it maybe come from the outside or did it come from the inside or was it more gradual or both or? I think it was a gradual. I think, you know, part of always wanting to be better is always in pursuit of something greater than what you were yesterday. And mm -hmm. so I can't necessarily say that it was a, a point, but there was, there came a time where there was an awareness that mm -hmm. this world is full of potential that our creator made this world a blank canvas. And he says that I've equipped you with gifts and talents and you can create the masterpiece that you want for yourself. And to know that I had been limiting myself all these years, it was like, okay, wait a minute, hold on. I need to break free of this. And as I started going into coaching and getting, uh, getting my certification in coaching, part of the process is I had to be coached weekly as mm -hmm. I was learning the tools to coach other people. That was probably the biggest transformation for me in my mindset because you can't spend that much time, energy, and investment in yourself and not have something happen as a result of it. So as I began to get coaching or developing my coaching practices and getting cert my certification, I was pouring into myself. Mm -hmm. But something must have um, ignited in you that you wanted to become a coach, I would think. Like, um, I, I love how you say that you wanted to better yourself compared to what you were yesterday, because a lot of people focus and they want to become better 
than other people or they want to, but you wanted to become better than yesterday. So, but somehow not everybody then would automatically think, oh, now I have to, or not have to, but oh, now I want to become a coach. No. So what was that like? So what were you doing before for work or, or for, for, for a living? And then yeah. felt like you want to become a coach. Yeah, that's, that's good because I, I, again, I was working as a coach in the educational arena. So wow. my day in and day out, I was coaching teachers on yeah. how to help students get better. And a lot of times the students were me. <laughs> it was who I was when yeah. I was that age, ah. you know. And so part of that is I knew I had wisdom. Yeah. I knew I was that person that everyone came to for advice. And mm -hmm. so I felt this pull to, uh, let me see, uh, think about life coaching. Let me see if that's a route that I want to go into. So I think that was the transition. It was mm -hmm. like, okay, um, Oprah Winfrey wrote a book. And in the book, it's called The Path Made Clear. And in this, she talks about, uh, it's not just a book by her, it's all these great thought leaders. And she talks about how life has a way of pushing us to our destiny, kind yeah. of put us on the road and, and the good, bad, and different things that happen all work together to make us into push us into purpose. Now, some of us refuse to go to the path that we're supposed to, and we resist it. And some of us follow into that path. It takes us a little longer than others, mm -hmm. but I think that's what happened. I was on this journey of mm -hmm. life and all of the things were cohesively working to guide me to purpose. Mm -hmm. And then life coaching came in that direction. And it was the most freeing and liberating piece mm -hmm. that got me to this place today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. And then so how would you say played like I read in the beginning, you also lost a lot of weight, either before, after or during and you started running. So like I heard before that some people when they start losing weight, if they do it with um, questioning their life in general, then they may like it has a ripple effect in the rest of their life. Others come from a different angle and then all of a sudden their weight changes because, because of that. So how was it for you? It's like what, what came first, the egg or the chicken? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Coaching or yeah. the so it was uh, all of part of the process. My story was that I was on a continuous roller coaster of ups and downs. Mm -hmm. I was I would get really motivated and I would lose 20 pounds mm -hmm. and then I would go back to eating the same foods and gain it all back and plus some. And it was one mo moment up the next moment down, get really excited about the weight loss and then gain it all back. When I started going through coaching. What I realized, and this is what coaching does, it allows you to have awareness about mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. And what I realized was that I invested a lot of energy into losing the weight, but I didn't invest the same amount of energy in keeping the weight off. Mm -hmm. When I understood that, it was like everything opened up to me. And so I was doing good with the weight loss. But when I understood that, that's where the 5k, I said, I have to do something that keeps me active yeah. to keep the weight off. So I said, let me push past this limiting belief that I had about running a 5k. Mm -hmm. So I started this app called couch to 5k. And yeah. literally, it takes you from getting off the couch to running your first 5K. And it's interval training. So you start off, and the first day, it says, okay, I want you to walk, and now I want you to run for one minute. I said, you want me to do what? <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't believe at the time before I started that I could run down the street. And I kept on, I kept pushing myself. I kept speaking affirmations. I kept telling myself, you can do this. I had that goal in mind. And before I know it, it said, run three minutes, five minutes. Yeah. And then I would, ran my first 5K in record time. And as I was working and doing all of this on my mind, the weight just kept falling. And before I knew it, I was at the smallest weight that I ever been in my adult life. 
And so now I'm sitting around about a 205 and looking mm-hmm. fabulous and feeling fabulous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, amazing. I, I know that app, the, the Couch to 5K. I, uh, f- I think about five years ago, a friend and I, we did it together. And I remember in week one, uh, we, we looked forward a little bit and, and I, I forgot which week, but sometimes you have to run for 10 minutes and we're like, 10 minutes? <laughs> we're never going to be able to do that. See, and the when blessing time of it, came around, we actually were able to do that. It's yeah. an amazing app. <laughs> the blessing of it is I didn't know how to use the app, so I couldn't look ahead. So it was every day was a surprise for me. So it was like, okay, run a minute. I was like, okay, run three minutes. You're like, ooh, okay. And by the time I got to 10 minutes, like, oh, you want me to do what? Okay. So it was a surprise. It was like, oh, pop, there you go. <laughs> Well, lucky Lou, you, because we were like, oh, my God, 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and then we would be running one minute and we were like, thank God that wasn't 10. We couldn't do 10. <laughs> it's like so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I love it. This is a good app. We're going <laughs> we're gonna to recommend that app, I think. <laughs> yeah. I don't work so, for them, but I definitely believe in it. And I've even used this in other areas. Yeah. And so you think about how you go from someone that couldn't run a block to running a 5K. I mean, literally running a 5K in record time for a new runner, for Mm -hmm. someone in my age group. Mm -hmm. You take those same principles and you apply it. You don't try to get to the finish line in the first week. You build up, you build up your resistance. You build up your stamina until Mm -hmm. you can get to the place where you want to go and reach your goal. Yeah, yeah. I, I say that often, like, you know, I help people declutter. And I always say, like, you have to start small and you have to build up your decluttering muscle. You wouldn't run 5K the first day. No, and you couldn't. And I want to um, circle back real quick to something else that you said, too, is that a lot of people do or wrong or, or are misguided when you said you do you you. Um, invested a lot of energy in losing the weight, but you never invested any energy in maintaining. And that's with so many other areas of our life sometimes too. No, I feel like the pain gets too big. Then we invest a lot of energy to change something, change a habit or lose weight or declutter or get our finances straight or whatever it is. And then we reach the goal. We, we're happy. And then we relax and, 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 and go back and, if you think about it, if we would do it like that app, Couch to 5K, we start slowly and then we keep it up. It even needs less energy to change, no? Like if you would average it out, it needs way less energy. Much nicer process too than um, pushing yourself in the beginning to, to, to make that big change that you cannot sustain. Yeah. And, you know, you you said something that kind of hit home because I think about, you know, when people look at me, they look at all this success and where I am today. Mm -hmm. But when I think about it, I had 40 plus years of bad habits, Mm -hmm. mindsets, things that I had built. And let's you know, let's deal with the weight and eating habits. I had eaten a certain way forever. My family, you know, in African-American families, you know, food was our comfort. It's, you know, everything. So I had food memory similar to muscle memory and typing Mm -hmm. memory. So, you know, the smallest thing would take me back to a certain food Mm -hmm. or I would hear a song and would take me to a memory that was associated to food. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I had to realize that as I was changing my habits and I had to make sure that I had things in place and realize that. It's not going to come overnight. And so every day I have to work. I have to remember. I have to set new reminders about mm-hmm. who I, who do I want to be right now? Because mm-hmm. I don't ever want to go back to that person that was 65 pounds heavier, that was on four medications to maintain mm-hmm. my type 2 diabetes. I don't want to be that person. So yeah. every day I, I make conscientious choices so that I can live in the abundance and the joy of the place that I'm in today. Yeah. I love that you're saying that because it's, um, it's often with the, with the clutter the same. You can't just change overnight because you lived like this already. And I, I compare food with clutter a lot because it gives us a certain comfort. And you said with food too, oftentimes the memories are also family, being together with people, 
um, comfort, feeling safe and all that. And, and when people, some people do it with food, like depending on where they're coming from, what family they're coming from or how they are themselves. Other do it with, with buying items, you know, it's like somewhere we all try to get that comfort from. And when we learn that we can get the comfort from ourselves, no, from within and by just tweaking our beliefs a little bit, then we don't need the food or we don't need all this, um, these things buying, but it is a lot of work, but that's how you sustain your success instead of doing this roller coaster thing and being possibly on medication, like you said, or, or living in a, in a house that um, is, is stressing you out because there's so much stuff hanging around. Yeah. And you, you know, you, you, I mean, so many good points that you bring up that I think about is when I coach and what I was trying to do was a three approach, um, three-step approach to coaching and working with people. It's called learn, be, and do. So the do is the action. And that's what most people go after. I want to lose the weight. I want to declutter, clean up my house, get rid of all that. But I venture to say what's most important in the three steps is the learning. Mm -hmm. Because you learn, why am I cluttering? Why am I holding on to these things? Why am I eating? Why can't I lose the weight? Why am I on this roller coaster? And then the B part, which is the middle part, is who do I want to be? What characteristics do I need to have? If I want to be a person that's free from clutter, who do I need to, how do I need to show up? Uh, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? So when you understand those first two parts, you can better design an, a do or an action to sustain the place that you want to be. Yeah. And I think yeah. that in itself is powerful. Yeah. And it's so true. So true. Um, so is that what you would call a holistic transformation? Because you kind of like say that you had a holistic transformation. No, is that what you, that uh, l um, learn, be, do, is that what you would call the, tra uh, the holistic transformation? Or do you have some an other definition for that? So I personally believe that holistic transformation has to do with the whole person, mind, body, soul and spirit mm -hmm. so when again when people look at me they see the outward they see the weight yeah. that's easy but what they don't see is the mindset and all the things that I do every day to keep my mind and to shift my thinking so that I can break free from those limits that I put myself and then how I feed my spirit and my soul so that I can exude and be the ray of joy and and sunshine that I want to uh, let out and beam on everyone else. So when I say holistic transformation, I said it, it not only happens in the body, it happens in the mind, your mm -hmm. beliefs, your mindset, your, your uh, values, and then your spirit. What's your emotions? How do you respond to other people? Uh, do you, are you a person full of joy and all of those things? And if you work on that, you'll live a life of fulfillment in your spirit and soul. That's where you find purpose. Mm -hmm. That's where you connect to your creator. We all long for it to connect to our higher being. And yeah. so uh, when we're able to do all of that, it, we're able to live a life of true purpose, fulfillment, love, and joy. Mm -hmm. So if now somebody would come to you um, and they would want to have such a beautiful holistic transformation, but they would be scared. So like I give you an example. I had a client. He re she really wanted to um, change and not hang on to stuff as much and, and move forward. Um, but she, she said to me, I'm kind of scared. I, I feel like I will not recognize myself. And I'm pretty sure in a way you don't recognize yourself now the way you are now compared to how you were before your um, transformation. So what would you, what words of encouragement or what, what wisdom could you give somebody that is wanting to change, but is so scared that they kind of stay stuck? Wow. That's so because, you know, who we are, we don't ever want to lose who we are. Yeah. I mean, who, you know, we know that person and this go to go to another place or be a different person that we don't recognize. That's that's scary in itself. So one of the tools that we use in coaching is called future self. 
And in Future Self, what you do is we walk you through an exercise where we take you on a journey to yourself 10 years down the road. Mm -hmm. And you get, you, you're able to ask your future self any question that you desire. How did you get here? What lessons do I need to know? What should I avoid all of those things? Because part of coaching is we believe that you are an expert about yourself. We just help you find the truth about who you are and about yourself. And so then also I would probably want to explore what's the fear, what's the underlying fear and how can we minimize that fear, not get rid of it because fear serves purpose but how can we take that fear and find the benefits of it and mm -hmm. find the value of it? Like someone asked me a question recently. They was like, I want to be in a relationship, but I can't get past the wall. Mm -hmm. I can't put up, get past the walls. I said, lean into the wall. Mm -hmm. They're like, what do you mean? Embrace the wall. Walls are designed to protect us. They're designed to shield us. So don't, push the wall away or try to get rid of the wall, understand the purpose of the wall and then design an action plan to get around the wall when you need it, but know how to get back, back. into the wall mm -hmm. when you need it as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what the beauty of coaching is. It's, it's taking you on a journey and accepting you for who you are in all your beauty, good, bad, ugly, and indifferent and saying, okay, who do I want to be? And how can I merge those two lives together? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ooh, I love that's that. Answer. That's amazing. <laughs> I love that answer because we we don't only have a future self; we also have a past self. And um, like, no matter who we are, we can look at our past self, whether it's five years ago, ten years ago, or even a year ago, and we can recognize that we're not the same person. So there is no standing still, anyways. And I love how you're saying like we're going to go and ask our future self because then we'll ask our own wisdom and we make sure we stay in our own truth and in our own values and not are just taking on something from the outside, which I feel like happens a lot when people look, they look to the outside. How should I be? Which the should is not really a word I like very much. But the minute I hear somebody say should, I kind of know that it's probably not what they really mm -hmm. want to do. It's kind of what they feel like they have to or should do. And it's um, what voice is talking here now. But yeah. so yeah, I love this answer to ask your future self. I love that. And then also too, is we oftentimes hold so dearly when we're intimately in a situation, it's hard for us to look outside of it introspectively. Mm -hmm. So we do the, another exercise called bird's eye view, where we said, take yourself out as mm -hmm. a third person. Imagine you was a bird looking down at the situation. Mm -hmm. What would it look like then? What would that be now? Would you said that makes sense because we're so intimately involved and have all the emotions. But when we take it out into a third person, mm -hmm. we remove ourselves from the emotions of it so that yeah. we can think about it introspectively and without the, the ups and downs and all the feelings that come along with it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's also a good. Yeah, I call it the forty thousand feet uh, view. The where you, like, I use that a lot when when I was still working in finance, and we would get stuck on some problem, something wouldn't add up or whatever, and you sometimes had to walk away and then come back from the forty thousand feet, and it can help so much. So, um, or it you can go on a walk and just kind of get out of the area um, or, or of the uh, out of the problem and and then it will the solution will come again from within oftentimes yeah. I also feel too that um, and I kind of assuming you might agree that uh, having a coach helps too because somebody from the outside sees us in a different way and may see the limitations that we're putting up around us or in front of us and and the, the coach then can say well you could just move this limitation to the right and walk through no and and we we don't see it because it's like right here no yeah you know i believe everyone needs a, either a counselor or a coach yeah. and you may not need one consistently but at some point in your life and um this is a lot of people get lost in that if you if your past is holding you back and there's a trauma that is keeping you anytime you move forward with your past you need a counselor. Mm -hmm. 
If your past has no hold on you and you want to shape your future, you need a coach. Mm -hmm. So in thinking about the clutter, if what's keeping the clutter in my life, the chaos has to deal with a trauma, I need to deal with a trauma. Yeah. If, the trauma, if it's not a trauma or nothing holding me back and I want to design and shape a future, you need a coach. So everyone needs a, either a counselor or a coach. Or a coach, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and we also have to start understanding that whatever is in our life um, or keeps us stuck in our life has a lot of meaning. And if we start dealing with it, then things will start moving. Um, that's, I, I feel like... Um, because a lot of people are hanging on to, um, like most people are hanging on to clutter because of a certain reason, not just because they're too lazy to get rid of it. It's, it's usually not that they're too lazy to get rid of it. There is some story wrapped around it, whether it's grief or trauma or not as dramatic, but still some kind of like nostalgia or whatever, or that we're like getting older, like, um, you said already we're living 40 years in a certain way, we're getting older, then sometimes we're becoming a little bit um, melancholic, maybe looking back thinking like, whoa, darn it, now I'm not 20 anymore. And like, yeah. it's, um, yeah. And so that can be often the reason too that keeps us stuck, no? Because we're kind of looking only backwards instead of forward. Yeah. And you know, a lot of times we associate clutter and chaos with items and things. What about the emotional clutter? Yeah. What about the spiritual clutter? I recently went on vacation to the beautiful island of Punta Cana, Dominican Republic. Oh. And it was an opportunity to break free from everything and just be in tune with myself. Just, you know, focus on being at peace and just relaxing. And in that, what I realized this, as I was walking the beach early in the morning, seeing the waves crash up against, I realized that I had some things in my life that was taking up space and preventing other things to come in my life. Mm -hmm. This is powerful because oftentimes we don't realize that it wasn't a thing. It wasn't an item. It wasn't clothing. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was uh, things that were taking up time, things mm -hmm. that was taking up energy, mental capacity. And yeah. I said, you know what? If I free this, this will open up the door for other things that I desire. And so I let it go. I've been more productive. Mm -hmm. I've had more peace in certain areas that was already good, but it took it to another level. Mm -hmm. So when we think about chaos, we can't think about it only as items. Yeah, what yeah. about the emotional chaos that we carry or the spiritual chaos or the relationship chaos that we carry? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I talk a lot about uh, also social clutter, you know, like, and, yeah. and, and I also joke and say, everything starts with mental clutter. Somehow it all starts, like whether it's the representation is a physical item or not, it, it is in a, in a way it's mental clutter. Yes, very good point. Very good point. Yeah, I could talk with you for hours, I'm telling you. <laughs> we uh, need to be a little bit mindful. Um, so talk a little bit about your business. So what uh, do you have like a special um, um, category of people you help with or your life coach and you help just anybody who wants to have help or um, explain a little bit? So I am a wellness and transformational coach. Mm -hmm. I'm also a motivational speaker as well as a mentor, but more so the coaching practice. So anything that has to do with wellness, holistic wellness, okay. uh, mind, body, soul, and spirit, mm -hmm. I support. Now, I have programs set up for uh, holistic, the ultimate transformation, which deals with all, because some people need, they like, listen, I need a total transformation in all areas. And then there's some people that says, listen, I don't have a weight issue. I don't have maybe a, a, a soul and spirit issue, but I do have a mindset issue. So I can work with those in isolation as well. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them carry over in each other, but, uh, they go as narrow as let me help you get your soul and spirit together, 
feed your energy, you know, raise your vibration all the way up to, I need to lose this COVID-15, <laughs> this weight that I done picked up over COVID, and I need to design a plan to help me do that. So yeah. that's what my coaching practice is. And it's, again, it goes back to the awareness, a mm -hmm. lot of focus on awareness and uh, acutely designing a plan of action for the individual. It's not a whole uh, one stop one size fit all. Yeah. We yeah. really target the individual to meet their needs. Yeah. I, I feel that is the way to go because we're not all the same. And um, it's, and if it's tailored for you, I think to the success is, um, rate is, is much better. Where can people find you then? Do you have a website or are you on social media? What is your preferred place where people should reach out to you if they were intrigued? So my website is currently being rebuilt, um, branding, you know, that business part of it. Yeah. So uh, you can find me at coachmarkmorton.com. When it's back up, it'll be fully functional. But right now I'm on all social media. Facebook is the best place if you want to mm -hmm. uh, catch me right now. And that's at Coach Mark with a K, Morton, mm -hmm. like Morton Salt. Mm -hmm. uh, you can come there. You can leave a uh, direct message. You can go to that page and you can see all my content. I'm always leaving motivational videos. I'm also on Instagram. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter. I'm on YouTube. I'm on it all. <laughs> You're everywhere. <laughs> I'm everywhere. You, wherever you look for me, you can find me. But if you really, uh, in, in the short time, if you need to find me yeah. and you want to contact me, go to Facebook and Facebook. you can okay awesome i will put all the links in the show notes so that people can really easily find you do you have any um last words of wisdom not that you haven't dropped wisdom yeah, already yeah, yeah. but maybe some last tips or wisdom that you want to leave us with before we part yeah so I, i'm going to go back to what i said earlier is that our creator designed the world and he said it's a blank canvas he mm -hmm. says i'm giving you the paint and I'm giving you the brushes, gifts and talents, wisdom and knowledge. And you can design and create the masterpiece that you desire for yourself. So take the limits off. Whatever you imagine you can be. If someone thought that they could send an aircraft outer space and land on another world, yeah. then you can imagine a world of unlimited possibilities for yourself. And if you can think it, you can be it. Yeah, beautiful words. So beautiful words. Thank you so much, Mark, uh, for taking <laughs> the you. time being on here and sharing your insights and your story with us. I mean, it's a remarkable story. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm humble. Thank you.